Good evening, Professor Narbonne. We are the Library of the European Parliament on the sidelines of the event Outlook for the MENA region, What Future for Stabilization and Reconstruction, organized by the EPRS. Uh, in his uh, keynote speech, the Member of Parliament, Mr. Benifei, has highlighted that uh, uh, short-term stabilization based on security approach and in particular to tackle uh, uh, terrorism and migration does not apply anymore. Um, basing on the findings of your recent ebook, what should be the basis for a new effective approach? Indeed, there, is, uh, there has been over the recent year uh, an excessive focus on short-term stabilization as a response to the challenges of conflicts and crises in the MENA region. Uh, this policy has obvious drawbacks uh, that does not address the major uh, underlying issues and root causes of conflict. And, and it also uh, tends to uh, reinforce certain dynamics uh, on the ground of uh, reconstitution of uh, authoritarian powers, particularly in, in conflict situations. Uh, we do believe from uh, the reflection uh, that we have carried forward in the ebook and uh, with a group of uh, scholars and experts on the issue of reconstruction that there is a strong need to look at uh, other aspects uh, of uh, post-conflict uh, reconstruction, which also uh, put an emphasis on uh, human security and uh, through a people-centered approach. Uh, of course, uh, international relations and the relations between, with, with, uh, also with uh, uh, Arab uh, countries uh, is based on a state-to-state -state, uh, approach, but it's important that uh, the international community and uh, particularly the EU uh, emphasizes uh, to the need to address uh, the, the situation, the dire situation in which uh, people uh, uh, of the region in conflict zone find themselves after so many years of devastating conflicts and destruction. Well, this applies to the ongoing main major conflicts such as uh, Libya, Yemen and Syria, but perhaps we could look at cases such as Iraq or Lebanon as well, uh, where social roots have not been addressed and we see what's going on now. Well, uh, the Lebanon case, which is also uh, similarities in the Iraqi case, uh, seen a reconstruction as a dynamic that has reinforced some of the features of uh, the political economy that uh, were present uh, before the conflict. Uh, some of the networks, uh, economic networks, have been reinforced so, through uh, war economy dynamics, and they, of course, have a, a strong uh, capacity to affect reconstruction itself, uh, with the sectarian power sharing uh, mechanism in, uh, in Iraq, for instance, which uh, tend to replicate uh, exclusionary features and they tend to have an impact on, on the population. And uh, this is similar to the situation in Lebanon, leading to economic failure and incapacity of uh, these countries to really uh, address the issues of the people in providing economic opportunity, long-term prospects for, for the youth, and uh, a path that leads to uh, socio-economic development of those countries. The result is, of course, that, uh, that this uh, dire contest is contested uh, by the, the people and what we are witnessing now in, uh, in Lebanon and in Iraq is uh, clearly uh, the effect of, uh, of a major failures of the reconstruction uh, in those countries that, uh, that led to, of course, uh, incapacity to respond to the people's needs. So in your speech you refer to to some extent to a resilience of the conflicts themselves in the in the MENA region. Uh, what do you mean and what are the common aspects 
of these of these conflicts. What we have been witnessing uh, in uh, recent years, which is confirmed to the uh, today with the escalatory dynamics in uh, uh, Libya, but also growing tension in the in the Gulf, is that uh, these conflicts have uh, their own dynamics and tend to create uh, new conflict dynamics uh, themselves. So there is a risk that uh, our policies to stabilize the region, the region uh, will not succeed and that we will continue to face new conflict cycles uh, with the increasing involvement of uh, regional powers who tend to use those conflicts as proxy for their rivalry, but also increasingly an internationalization, which is clearly very dangerous for the region itself, but also beyond the region. Uh, that is uh, the reason why there is a need for uh, more diplomatic uh, engagement uh, to try to address uh, the, the, the cases, the causes of, the, of those conflicts, and also uh, there is a need for uh, from the part of the international community and the West, and there is a need to uh, also look again at the uh, approach that we carried out in reconstruction. Uh, we need to look at uh, the needs of the people, the, the needs, for instance, of the large numbers of uh, refugees and IDPs that uh, will need to go back to their own countries. Uh, and we need to reinsert uh, a positive dynamic of reconstruction. If and if the situation on the ground does not allow, we should uh, at least start from local uh, focus and try to exploit the opportunities that present themselves to support those actors uh, at the local level, which can lead a, a virtuous reconstruction process, at least to address the problems of the communities and perhaps the returnees.